Hi everyone, Freddie Brooks here on our Tuesday Talks and I uh, hope you're all doing okay again on a beautiful day and here we are in, uh, in our great outdoors in, in, on Dragazebo in the, on the patio area. So welcome, welcome to the, our home, Thank, welcome to this, uh, this time where we just to unpack and talk about setbacks because this is a, a, a setback. We're in a better place now, obviously, nationally and globally than we were 12 months ago when there was no possible vaccines and I know there's all sorts of theories on vaccines, but I just thank, personally, I thank God for it. I thank God that uh, there is a way through and God always provides a way through. So in these moments that we have together, I want to talk about dealing with setbacks. So there is this setback that we have now, but maybe there are personal setbacks in your life. Maybe that's a health issue. Maybe that's a, a job issue. Maybe that's a relationship issue but dealing with setbacks and you know uh it, the bible d what's wonderful about the the word of god the bible is it does not hide the bad bits it doesn't hide the uh the bits that are, are not so good to to read about and we read about people who had moral setbacks uh, like David was one of them, Samson was a terror, uh, and uh, you, they did all sorts of things, but yet in their setbacks, they were able to turn back to God and find a way through and deal with those setbacks. And, and so the Bible is full of incidences of when uh, stuff happened and then people, the people cried out to God and God showed them the way through. And it says that they, call, they called out to the Lord and he sent his word, Psalm 107 and verse 20. He sent his word and healed them when they called out to God. And it's when we call out to God, dear friends, in the midst of the setback, that, that God will respond to that and he will come. And so the Bible is full of these sort of setbacks. Uh, and then the, after the setback, they seem to be catapulted forward. So what's, what what, what's ha may happen now in our lives, actually, if we entrust our lives to God through Jesus, God can use that setback, even if it's our own fault, as it were, that we're in the mess that we're in, OK, God can use that when we yield it to him and turn that setback into a catapult to move us on to the next level. The whole church it globally and nationally has had this setback of COVID-19, but God can use that setback to catapult the church to the next level. And that's what I believe God is doing. So how do we deal how do we deal with these setbacks in these next five or ten minutes? Well, I want to unpack uh, one particular setback in the Bible and, uh, and see how that was dealt with. If you're following this and you've got your Bible uh, at hand, then we're going into 1 Samuel chapter 30. And uh, that's 1 Samuel, that's in the Old Testament and chapter 30 uh, and uh, that it's a it's an incident where i'm not going to read all the verses but it's an incident where david king david and his men uh, had actually lost a battle and they come back and they find that their whole families their wives their children have been taken captive it's disaster. I mean, it's not just a setback. It's not just, oh dear, this is a bad day. This is not a very nice day. It's a bit cloudy today. 
this was like huge and with like with every setback you you get the people doing the blame game uh they, they instead of uh looking for solutions they look for somebody to blame and that, we see that in politics don't we we see oh they should have done this and they should have done that. they probably should but let's look for solutions let's find an answer rather than highlight the problem so in 1 samuel 30 you will see that they have they come back and they have this massive setback and, and they, they don't know what to do, and they started to weep and cry. So I'm, I'm trusting that you're going to be looking up this scripture yourself. Save me reading it to you. I'm going to read a verse in a moment. But do you look at it yourself uh, when you can, or after the broadcast, or even now? But, uh, and, they, 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 and it says that they were thinking of stoning David. I mean, that's what they did in those days. They, 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 it was pretty ferocious time to live in. Uh, and David knows this. And it, I'm going to pick it up in verse 6 of 1 Samuel uh, chapter 30. And I'm reading from the Amplified version, the classic, the, the classic Amplified and not the updated Amplified. It says, David was greatly distressed. Well, I'd be greatly distressed, wouldn't you? Not only have you lost your family, you've lost the battle, you've now lost the support of your leadership, uh, the, or everybody's turning against you. It couldn't get worse. And he says he was greatly distressed. And that's, that's the lovely, refreshing thing about the scriptures. It didn't tr pretend to be okay. It didn't try to be whistling in the dark and going, yeah, it's great, guys. It's all right. No problem. No, he's greatly distressed. It says, for the men spoke of stone in him because the souls of them were bitterly grieved, each man for his sons and daughters. It says, here's the but. There's lots of buts in the Bible. It says uh, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Wow, wow. So it says here, but David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord his God. His back's up against the wall. Everything's gone wrong. He's had a major, major personal, public, his, his leadership style has been rocked, everything. It says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Now watch your translations, because some translation says he, found, he, felt, he felt his strength was in the Lord, one translation said. Utter rubbish, I'm sorry. He was raw. He was just hurting. And it, but somehow he goes deeper into himself and finds his strength, encouragement in the Lord. It, the Hebrew, it mean, it's literally, he made himself strong. He made himself strong. That's what we have to do in setbacks, friend. We have to make ourselves strong. You say, okay, how do you do that then? Well, I'll tell you what I think he did. By the way, when he did these things, you see the verses afterwards, he then puts on a priest's garment and then he seeks God and God tells him what to do. But first of all, it started with this grit of, of disappointment and dealing with the setback of going deep into himself and saying, you know what, I'm not going to let this get the better of me we're going to find a way through. And he started to strengthen and make himself strong. He talked to himself. And we see this in Psalm 103. Maybe David was referring to this. I don't know. He says this. Psalm 103. And you know the verses if you're familiar with your Bible. But if you're not, I'm going to read them anyway. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Excuse me. And all that is within me. 
Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pits. Yeah, he was talking about this time. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. He talked to himself. Go back to those phrases. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He doesn't say, Lord, would you help me to bless you? He doesn't say, God, I'm waiting for that warmth of your presence. All those things are good. He says, I will bless the Lord. Again, in other places, he will say, bless the Lord at all times. Let his praise be continually in your mouth. People say, oh, you're talking to yourself. You're crazy. I'll tell you what, you're crazy if you don't. You need to talk to yourself. You need to speak to your own spirit, your own soul. We see fast forward into the New Testament. We see Paul and Silas on their mission, taking the gospel of the kingdom. As a consequence, they're put in, they're put in prison. As a con and when they're put in prison, they're beaten. They're lashed. And they're put into the deepest part of the prison. It's in Acts 16. You can see that story. We're in Acts 16, verse 25. They're back. They're, their backs are bleeding. They, they may have been wondering what on earth, how, what went wrong there? How did we get into this setback? We would, God, we believe God, you sent us here. How did we get here? They could have had a moan and groan party. But instead, Dave, uh, Paul says to Silas, come on, let's encourage ourselves in the Lord. Well, he actually didn't say those words literally. It says that they sang psalms and prayed. And at midnight, now there's a, there's a metaphor in that midnight. In the darkest time, at the midnight hour, they, they encourage themselves in the Lord. The story goes on that God sends an earthquake. The whole prison was shaken. The chains come off. God turns the situation right around. The jailer and his whole family get saved. That's how God can turn around our setbacks. But we have to do something about it. But one last question. How could David strengthen himself how could david encourage himself how could paul and silas do it and many others in the scriptures how could they do it i'll tell you how they all had a relationship with god i was talking to somebody the other day there's a god opportunity to speak to someone when i was out and about Someone who didn't believe, and I told them about my story. I was an atheist that didn't believe in God, and found out that God I didn't believe in believed in me. And this person was very uh, interested in what I was saying. And uh, they, this person was just off to, to go to a funeral, and it was a humanist funeral. And when she found out I was a retired minister, she said, oh, I'm so sorry. I said, no, I, that's good. I don't mind that. In actual fact, I prefer it. Because if you don't believe this stuff, it's hypocritical. And she totally agreed with me. And I said, you know, it's not about religion. It's about a relationship. It's Some of you listen, watching this, you think, yeah, we know that. But we've got to re-know it. It's about a relationship. Those who, who are in a relationship with God, what's your relationship like today? How are you dealing with the setbacks? Are you like David and Paul and Silas going deeper and saying, God, I'm going to talk to myself. I'm going to speak into my own spirit. I'm going to find a solution to this because there is a solution to your setback. There's a solution to my setback. There's a solution. That solution is a person 
and that person is Jesus. And for the believer, he lives on the inside. John writes, greater is the one that is in you than he that is in the world. That's why we can speak to our soul and say, come on, I will bless the Lord. I will praise you. So if you're facing those setbacks right now, when this broadcast is finished, take yourself off somewhere, whether it's in the house or for a walk, and go and start to speak to yourself. Don't, don't let go. Be like a man called Hezekiah who was very sick. He was going to die. And it says that he, he, he turns his face to the wall and starts talking to God. Turn your face to the wall today. Say, God, I, I, I need a solution to this setback. I need to know and start encouraging yourself. Start literally make yourself strong. It says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. But of course, if by chance you're watching this and you're not a believer, You've just stumbled on it. You've stumbled on the YouTube channel. You've stumbled on this. However, welcome, by the way, if you have. And just say you can have a relationship with God. You just receive Jesus into your life. And he comes in by the power of the Holy Spirit. And he abides in us. And when we face things in life, we can face them and be strong in the Lord. When we have stuff, we can find the solution for the stuff. And that solution is a savior and his name's Jesus. Well, I pray that this has blessed you and helped you. If it has, get in touch. Get in touch with Rivers Ministries. Message me. Um, let's connect up. Share this on your platforms, wherever you are in the world. And so I'm going to pray and wish you a good day. Father God, I thank you that in every, whenever setbacks come, you always provide a solution. Thank you that solution is our saviour and your name is Jesus. Lord, I ask that you will just help each and every one, particularly those facing real setbacks, maybe health issues, financial issues, um, answers to prayer that have not materialized yet, uh, disappointment with family issues, relationship issues, whatever they are. God, would you help them now? Would you uh, uh, stretch out your arms toward them? whoever they are, wherever they are, in Jesus' name. And Lord, help us all to press on, press in, and see and be all for your glory. Because you're the one who heals all. You're the one who forgives all. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Until the next time.